Hello there, I'm Molly Berry, and this is an Enshrouded Beginner's Guide and Tips video for getting started building in the game. If you've seen some of the builds in this game and thought, I could never do anything like that, then this video is for you. We'll walk through the basics using only entry-level materials and hopefully help spark some creativity for your first Enshrouded build. In this video, you'll see us start with this plain box house and we'll turn it into this. Let's get started. Explore to find more building blocks at your own pace. There are so many unique building blocks in this game, so if you're eager for more, have no fear. There are quests all throughout the map where you will find stacks of special building blocks and unlock the recipes. Building blocks are also stashed in unmarked crypts and other areas, so be sure to balance your time between building and exploration if you want to unlock all of the blocks. All of the blocks and items in today's video are made with blocks that you can actually craft right away after you discover the materials in the starting area. And they can all be found in the very, very early starting zone within minutes of starting a fresh save. We're gonna be using rough wood blocks, rough stone blocks, mycelium overgrown blocks, shroud wood, rough flint stone, and stone shingle roof blocks. Here's a quick map to show the location of Shroudwood, Flintstone, and a safe spot to farm mycelium that's nearby and out of the shroud. You'll need Shroudwood to craft your glider, so make sure to get some cooked wolf meat and some bandages before venturing into the shroud. One of the coolest things about Enshrouded's voxel-based building mechanics is that starting with a plain box house actually makes perfect sense. Box houses are very common in survival games, and they are often poo-pooed as subpar or basic. But in this game, boxy shapes and basic designs really are sort of a fundamental jumping off point, and it makes perfect sense to start with something plain and basic. To start the process with this little box house, I used right click to remove the voxels to punch out a window shape. Then I added a floor and walls, to create a little nook. I'm using rough wood and stone blocks right now, but we'll see in a little bit how this game really encourages us to branch out and mix materials to make amazing builds. With a rough outline, I felt good about framing the windows and adding them in next. I'll be using the basic wooden window frame and the wooden door for this build. With the windows installed and the window frame pop out complete, I wasn't quite happy with the resulting shape, so I set about removing the bottom layer on the outside of the frame to slim out the design a little bit. I would be remiss if I didn't point out the magical undo button at the bottom right corner of your screen. Uh, depending on your console or computer situation, it'll show you how to do it there. The roof is quite a challenge to line up correctly, but I added that in next and the result is amazing. I encourage you to play around quite a bit to practice and learn which side the block highlight needs to be on in order to add the next piece or the next voxel in your build. It's okay and totally normal if the roof feels so much more difficult to build. The blueprints are not very easy to snap or play successfully when you have odd angles or tricky heights. Don't be discouraged. Here is a time lapse of my roof build, which took the better part of an hour because I had to delete and replace and tweak and lower and raise, adjust and center repeatedly. But in the end and at night, we have lights and we have a better box. Let's move on to further embellishments. All right, it's time for my favorite part, maybe of this entire thing, and that's taking out what we just did and putting in something new. <laughs> And step one in the process is to identify what you'd like to replace. For me, I knew I wanted to replace the rough stone block and the rough wood block, uh, respectively, with some flintstone. Not all of it, not entirely sure exactly what it's gonna end up looking like, but we're just gonna get the process going. This process of removing 
materials that I originally built in to replace them with something new is gonna continue throughout the build. So let's go ahead and move on to the next tip. And that is to add pillars to the corners. I know, sounds small, but the results are huge. This small detail will elevate your design into the stratosphere. <laughs> I have been experimenting with all sorts of ways to do pillars, and I find them to be a very simple way to add detail and embellishment with a pleasing outcome. You can add them to the inner walls as well as the exterior, uh, but here we'll be placing pillars and overhead beams all along the starter box on the outside to further liven it up. I'm using rough flint stone and mycelium overgrown blocks for these embellishments. And the next thing I'm gonna do is chisel off a corner of the pillar on each of the four corners of the main box. And this is gonna add again, visual interest and it's gonna match up to the beam that I place on the top as well. Tip number five, completely change the shape of your box house. I started out with a tiny little square box. It was a four by four with a four meter, uh, but I added onto it. I made it a rectangle. I decided I would put shadow wood floor to create a very long, narrow uh, workroom workspace. And it's become now a long cookhouse with a crafting area. The voxel building here is gonna be our friend as we try to experiment and change our minds and tweak our designs. So I encourage you to just play around with it, see what looks good, see what feels right. The results are astounding and it really is super easy to take the blueprints and create something completely different from where you started. Use double walls to create depth and carve out spots for bookshelves, cabinets, candles, and fireplaces. Here I am adding exterior windowsills and carving out windows and a back door leading to a patio I added for a couple of my crafting stations and NPCs. I also chiseled out a beautiful hearth for my fireplace. And it was really so, so easy to make it super cozy. After the fireplace was done, I knew I needed to tackle the windows and finish those out. So I went ahead and removed the layer in the corners and also one more inner layer to add a little bit of depth. The result was really nice and it has some really lovely light that comes in during the day. And I think we'll toss some candles on there at night. I stopped to add windows onto the gable on either side of the main original box house. Fast forward a little bit and I've added some shroud wood to the back wall of the longhouse. And now I am removing some slits to add a little bit of architectural interest. So it's not just a plain flat wall. I went back to the back patio and placed some stairs and then got to work on the front path. I'm using overgrown mycelium blocks, rough stone and flint stone combined here, mainly rough stone blocks. Quick time lapse because this did take a little bit of extra time to go in here and do these details, but I think the results are really pretty. Try to use the default blueprints as a starting off point and not as the de facto only way to build in Enshrouded. I have really enjoyed the freedom of starting out with a fresh canvas of blank walls and foundations, then punching out windows, adding walls, inserting cozy reading nooks or bedroom spaces, and generally just completely reworking them. Here I've taken the blank canvas of the back wall of the box starter house and punched out a giant opening for a back balcony entry. I'm using rough wood and shroud wood blocks to carve out a space for a couple crafting NPCs. And here's another cheeky time lapse, this time a quick detail to finish off the edges of your build and cover protruding paving stones is to rake and do a once over once your build is complete. Adding finishing touches with wooden platters, 
pitchers, bowls, and mugs help make the space feel more cozy. As well as many, many, many candles. As many candles as I can find. And it feels like we're done for now. At least until we unlock more comfort items with advanced materials. But that, I think, is for another day. I'll leave you with one final tip. And the eighth and final tip as we walk through clips of the finished build is this. Don't forget, there are no rules. Who said you had to have even paths or a flat space to start your build or perfect symmetry when adding window slits into your castle walls? You can make order out of chaos or create chaos out of mundane shapes with Enshrouded's building system. It truly is just up to your imagination. I can't wait to see what people do with the open format voxel building in this game, and I hope my little video of easy tips has helped you get some inspiration and spark some ideas for your build. Leave a note in the comments if you have feedback or further ideas for me to explore. I can't wait to dive more into this game. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time. And that's it for today. Now it's time for you to let me know how you feel by liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing my video. Major thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. See you next time.